Hey, Coach, uh, with the pitchers struggling over the weekend, is there anything mechanically you can tell these guys how they can turn it around on the mound? No, we just move forward. I mean, we're playing in a very tough league, and I think you 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 come into weekends where you you play teams and they're either at their best or maybe not at their best. You just don't know. It's week to week. I mean, I think if you went into the Marriott and asked LSU players why they didn't play as well last week, they they wouldn't they wouldn't know, and they wouldn't they really couldn't tell you why they saw the ball so well this weekend either. So. Uh, we're not, I'm not jumping to changing mechanics of, of pitchers right now. We just get them, get them going again, get them the ball and, and get out there. It's a tough league. Aria. Uh, Tim, what's the status of the injured players for the SEC tournament, specifically Calvin Hewitt, Hunter Owen, Gavin Casas, and then is Jack Anderson hurt? I know he hasn't pitched in a few weeks. Uh, Jack Anderson had an oblique strain and we're trying to work him back. Uh, he'll, he'll, he'll start throwing. I, I don't know, Ari, if his, if he'll be available for, um, the tournament. If, if Jack was healthy, uh, you probably would have seen him out on the field. Uh, Cassis is home. He just had minor surgery on his knee. Uh, who else do you, Hunter Owen is still out. And Hewitt is, I would say, day to day. Uh, we're trying to get him back. Emily Prout. Hey, Coach. Uh, I'm just curious about the the mindset as you enter the postseason. Do you tell the guys to to wipe away this weekend, or you do you want them to use that as motivation? Yeah, I mean, it's it's a bit, bit of the same. I mean, it's it's just moving forward. I, I think, you know, whether we beat Arkansas or whether we lost LSU, it's my messaging to them doesn't change from year to year. Um, the context may be a little bit different, but in terms of how we proceed after a weekend series, it's, it's just go forward. That, that's, that's really all you can do. And, you know, this particular situation, the regular season is behind us. This tournament is, uh, we've entered this tournament being swept before and ended up being in the final game. So, you know, it's just, it, it's part of, it's part of the league that you're in and you, you, once you strap it on at the beginning of the year, you understand that that's a, that's a possibility. So we, we just move forward. Chris Harris. Morning coach. Hey, Chris. Hey. Just curious as to what, what's the challenge been like for you as a head coach, as your team kind of has had its ups and downs and struggles to find consistency this year? And how do you process that and then try to relay that to your players to find that consistency? Just trying to regroup and stay steady. I mean, I think it's, it's a centering process of once you move from one game to the next, it's, you know, after Thursday's loss, who's getting to Friday? After Friday's loss, who's getting to Saturday? After Saturday's loss, then you get to, to Sunday and, and regroup. It's like I said to Emily, I I don't I don't think it's really any any different. It's it's just trying to steady the group as much as possible and identify the areas that you can continue to grow um, without beating them down. This is a, it's a very awkward time of year because you're letting guys go um, that can't travel, which is, I would tell you, not, not easy for me. I mean, this is not a transactional business. I, I think I, I, I personally get very emotionally tied into these kids. And when you have to tell them that they're not part of a travel group and they've got to go on with their summer plans, I, I don't enjoy that. You know, it's like, it's it, that's tough business for me, period. Um, but it's part of what we do. Uh, but then it's in the mix of competition. And once we start to get on the road in this bus and go down to Hoover, I, I, I feel in a lot of ways, that's always, always been kind of medicine for us, good medicine for us in so many different ways. And not to say we've always played well in Hoover, but we've played well in Hoover for ever since I've been here. There's been days, there's been years where we came home after one, but the reality is if you look at the resume of work and the body of work, which I didn't talk to the team about that yesterday, I will after the season's over. It's, you know, it's, it's been 
No, it's been consistent. I, I'm not going to tell you we've been on the high side. And I'm not going to tell you we've been on the low side. Uh, I'm sure you'd say, well, it wasn't that low this weekend. It, it you know, it, it, it's, it's a score. It's, it's a loss, but their losses or wins, you just move forward. But I, I would say it's probably like any other year when you're going through it, you feel like a coach and on sitting in a chair, a two-legged chair, you know, you go backwards or, or all the way forward. It's, it's just a balancing act. Are you? Um, knowing that, you know, a couple different relief pitchers through, you know, over a hundred pitches last weekend and, you know, there's a couple guys out hurt, you know, how are you kind of approaching the bullpen usage? Is it going to be a little bit shorthanded in the first couple games in Hoover? Well, I mean, we'll have, we'll have players available. Um, we just have who we have. I, I mean, we'll get guys who can come back if, they haven't pitched a lot. Uh, we'll, I think we'll we'll be fine that way. I think the the main thing is just getting a good start and then not having to rely on your bullpen as much as we did this past weekend. I mean, we we got to the bullpen rather quick, and we'd rather not do that. With the exception of Saturday, I thought Chris did a a nice job. That was a good effort by him. But you just manage it. That's day to day too. Always will be day to day, especially this time of year. Tom Wood. Hi, Coach. Uh, you've kind of touched on it, but I'm curious as to what your team's confidence level is right now going forward. Is it a one game at a time approach, or are you looking looking beyond the first game against Ole Miss? We're just looking forward. I mean, that's really all we can do. Um, I would say they're they're a tough bunch. I mean, I. I They've been bruised before. They've been banged on a little bit before. We've had, as I said, some tough baseball games here the last five weeks, uh, but uh, they're fine. They're fine. I mean, it, they're, they're 18, 19, 20-year-old kids. They regroup pretty quick, quicker than the coach. Let me tell you that. Thank you. Yep. Back to Aria. Uh, your team has played pretty well on the road this year with some really big road series wins and not, you know, as well at home. You know, what do you think is the key for being really good away from home? And do you think that can help you guys in the postseason? Well, the kids enjoy playing on the road, Aria. I mean, they do. They, they get fired up for these trips. I mean, there's good music on the bus. They're, they, they are, they're happy. They're together. I would tell you it's it's probably if if I had if you asked me what's your favorite thing to do with your team I would say go play on the road. I, I just think it's completely different. I mean you're, you're together all the time. You're eating together. It feels like a family camping trip. It's uh, those bus trips are awesome. I mean especially if you win a game and you get on the bus with them. I mean it's no phones anymore. You know on our bus. So the kids are they're they're playful. They're singing. It's it's what you would want your own kids to do if you went upstairs with your wife and said, we're going to bed and you hear your kids laughing in the basement because they're having a good time. That's that kind of feels like a road trip for us. I, I enjoy it. I enjoy it for them. They get uh, you go in one of their rooms before they have to go to bed and you're liable to find 25 guys in one room just hanging all over each other. That doesn't happen when we're home. So there's some unique experiences that you get with it. It's uh, it's kind of cool. And I think they cherish it. They cherish the, and they should. I, I, there's uh, Those moments are fleeting and I want them to enjoy that. But I, I do think it makes them feel comfortable. And I think, you know, when you're like going to Arkansas, that atmosphere is as good as it gets, if, if not the best. They, they feel very comfortable in those atmospheres. Environments. Emily? I just got to follow up. You said that um, the kids bounce back a little bit faster than you do. Why do you think that, that you hold on to some of these losses and it's a little bit tougher for you to get over them? Because uh, I'm, you know, I'm a simpleton. I'm mentally touched. I'm, you know, probably should be in a med mental institute. I, I don't know, Emily. I, I, 
this shit means a lot to me. You know, I'm a, I'm an emotional guy. I, I don't care. I, it's what I, what I do, you know, I've spent 38 years doing this and the day that I don't give a shit is the day that I won't be in this chair. I, I love being here every day. I have a lot of gratitude towards being at Vanderbilt and being able to coach and teach. And if I could just walk away from things, I mean, it's just baseball. There's a lot going on around, you know, there, there's, you know, I got my parents in town here. There's a lot of other things in, that are going on in life, you know, besides just baseball and, and con, you know, you're contending with. So, but, you know, as far as the guys, I love that they care and I love that they can bounce back and I bounce back too, but yeah, I'm, I'm emotional about things and I'm, you know, I, I, I would rather be that way than be dead. And the day that I'm not, I'll probably be underneath. So I'm just going to keep going this way.